Hello and welcome to the session in which we will discuss qualified opinion and disclaimer. Qualified opinion and disclaimer are not clean opinion. They are not unmodified opinion. Unmodified means clean opinion. So it's very important to go back and review under which, under which condition we can give an unmodified or clean opinion. Well, include all financial statements. We have collected sufficient appropriate evidence. We need this for the unmodified clean opinion. The financial statements present fairly in accordance with GAAP or the other framework, IFRS or whatever framework we are using. We are in compliance. Four, no circumstances requiring the addition of an emphasis of a matter, paragraph, or modification. Now, we could have an explanatory paragraph, but that's optional emphasis of a matter or other matter. That's fine. And we looked at this in prior session. Before we proceed any further, I have a public announcement about my company, FarhatLectures.com. Farhat Accounting Lectures is a supplemental educational tool that's going to help you with your CPA exam preparation as well as your accounting courses. My CPA material is aligned with your CPA review course such as Becker, Roger, Wiley, Gleam, Miles. My accounting courses are aligned with your accounting courses broken down by chapter and topics. My resources consist of lectures, multiple choice questions, true-false questions, as well as exercises. Go ahead, start your free trial today. No obligation, no credit card required. There are two main reasons why we cannot give an unmodified opinion or unmodified opinion is not justified. We could have a gap reason and we could have a gas reason. What is a gap and what's a gas? Well, gap means we have a financial statement issue. We have a misstatement. The financial statements are not prepared in accordance with GAAP, the framework, and obviously the auditor disagree. And we looked at this condition, at these conditions in the prior session. And under those conditions, we can give qualified opinion or we can give adverse. When do we give qualified opinion? When do we give an adverse opinion? It all depends on the severity and pervasiveness of the issue. But we looked at this session, we looked at this topic in the prior session. In this session, we would look at gas issues. Remember, gas is fieldwork. Remember, in order to issue unqualified opinion, you have to have sufficient appropriate evidence. What if that's not the case? Then you have what's called a gas issue. So a gas issue sometimes is called, not sometimes, it's called, also called the scope limitation. The scope of the audit has been restricted. We have a scope limitation. Well, if that's the case, if we have a scope limitation, we could give a qualified opinion. Hold on, didn't you just said we could give qualified under gap? Yes, we can give qualified under gap and we could also give qualified under gas or we can give a disclaimer. Well, when do we give a disclaimer? When do, when do we give qualified? Basically, the same concept as under GAAP, depending on the severity and pervasiveness of the issue. And we'll discuss this in details. Also, we need to be aware that if the auditor is not independent from the client, if there's an independence issue, well, what do we have to do? We will disclaim or we could just simply withdraw from the engagement. If we are unable to obtain appropriate sufficient evidence, but the auditor conclude that the possible effect of the material misstatement could be material, so they are material, it's a material, but not severe and pervasive. Again, what is severe or pervasive? Severe or per pervasive means it's affecting the financial statement overall. Well, if that's not the case, then we can live with it. We have a scope limitation, but it's not severe. It's not affecting our judgment for the whole financial statement. Under those circumstances, we would give a qualified opinion. So the issue is material. We cannot collect, obtain appropriate evidence, but not severe. It's limited to a certain area. Under what circumstances? What are some examples? Well, some examples of the scope of limitation is time constraints. We did not have enough time, but we believe we did enough work to be comfortable giving a qualified opinion and we have to qualify it. Or we are unable to observe inventory. Well, at the beginning of the year, when the company counted the beginning inventory, we were not there. That's okay. We can live with their beginning inventory, but we're going to have to qualify. Maybe we were unable to or cannot confirm account receivable. Maybe the account receivable is not very large. Uh, maybe it's not maybe we can find alternative procedures. Maybe we can live with it. We can live without 
confirming account receivable because it's confined to a particular area. The, the issue is confined to a particular area. For example, we were unable to obtain an attorney letter, but we can live with that. We don't believe this company is exposed to a lot of lawsuits. We can live with that or to major ones. Accounting record is not adequate. Again, depending on under what circumstances, maybe we can live with that, maybe not. So what? So on the end, in, in the question that you, you, you'll be looking for, was it at the, at the severe or not severe, severe or pervasive? If, if it is, you have an issue. Now we have to ask ourselves, are we confined or restricted or is management placing restriction, restriction on us? Now bear in mind, if management is placing restricting on us, then we have to be very careful because they could be hiding something. Now, if we did not, ha if we did not have enough time or for technical reasons, we could not absorb inventory, that's different. But if management is refusing, is restricting us, then it's, it's, it's an issue. So if we're restricted by circumstances, that's fine. We can, we can live with that because just by circumstances, we cannot absorb, absorb ending inventory. But if management, if we're asking management and management is refusing, then our, you know, we should raise a lot of red flags on that. So what should we do? The first thing we should do is we should ask management to comply. And if they don't, we should ask the board of directors or the audit committee to put pressure on them. So this is the qualified. When do we give disclaimer? If the issue is material and notice and severe and pervasive. So we could not collect enough evidence and we believe we believe the evidence is affecting the overall financial presentation. It's not limited to one area. Under those circumstances, we disclaim. Remember, not adverse. Remember, adverse is for gap. And again, they try to they try to trick you. And that's why I keep repeating adverse is for gap. OK, so we cannot make we cannot collect enough evidence. Therefore, we cannot make a decision. What do we do? We disclaim. So one more time, we disclaim for gas, we give an adverse opinion for gap. And gas, as well as gap, they both have a qualified opinion. So both they could have a qualified opinion, simply put, as long as the issue is confined, whether it's gap or gas, if the issue is confined, we can give a qualified opinion. Now let's take a look at an actual report. Disclaimer of opinion. Well, this is what it looks like. Basically, we have an independent auditor's report. Disclaimer of opinion. We just tell you right there, we are disclaiming. Now we say we are, we were engaged to audit because we did the work. That's how we find out we could not collect enough evidence. Remember, this is the introductory paragraph of the unmodified report. That's fine. Here we go. Here's our opinion. We do not express an opinion on the financial statements of Adam Company because of the significance of the matter described for the basis of disclaimer opinion. So we'll, we're going to have a paragraph called basis for disclaimer opinion. And we explain what we could not do. We have not been able to obtain sufficient appropriate evidence to provide a basis for the audit opinion. Remember, that's one of the reasons to be able to, to give the users to give the users, it means give the shareholders, the stockholders, the users of the report, a clean opinion, you have to collect evidence. We could not collect evidence. And we will explain what the issue is and the basis for disclaimer. We would still put responsibility of management, responsibility of the auditor. And here we, we put down our responsibility is to conduct an audit of the financial statement according to GAS generally accepted auditing uh, standard. And however, because of the matter described of the basis in the basis of the disclaimer of opinion, we were not able to obtain sufficient appropriate evidence. Again, we emphasize this point. We were not able to obtain appropriate sufficient evidence. We also mentioned that we are independent of Adam company. So the, the issue is not independence because we could, we could have independence issue. And we're going to talk about this next. If the auditor is not independent, but is required to issue a report, then under those circumstances, the auditor will disclaim, disclaim an opinion. No other reason for disclaiming should be cited. Simply put, once you lack independence, then guess what you do? You disclaim. You don't mention anything about scope limitation if it exists. If you are restricted or not, it doesn't matter. Independence will override scope limitation. Also, you don't mention any audit procedures that the auditor undertake. And sometimes what happens is the auditor might have performed all the necessary auditing procedures. Nevertheless, you don't mention anything. 
no scope limitation, no auditing procedures you perform, whether they were acceptable or not. You don't mention anything. Simply put, you will state the following. We are not independent with respect to Adam Company. Therefore, as a result, we don't express an opinion as, as simple as that. We don't say anything else. We don't want to bias the perception of the users. We don't also want to bias the perception of the next auditor. Why? Because if you mention anything about scope limitation or auditing procedures were successfully completed, then guess what? You are already biasing their perception and you should not be doing that because you are not independent. Simply put, you would say, I am not independent. I disclaim. As simple as that. What should you do now? Go to farhatlectures.com and work MCQs, true false, to help you understand this topic better. Invest in yourself. Good luck, study hard, and of course, stay safe.